As Americans, we have a natural love for horses. They're beautiful, majestic animals and have captured our hearts since time began. Horses play an integral part of our American history, as well as our stories and our legends. Giant, larger-than-life animals that perform daring feats time after time in defense of their rider. But they all start out small, tiny, compared to the massive, powerful creatures they will someday become. And as powerful as they are when fully grown, like any other animal, they can sometimes be helpless in the earlier parts of their life dependent on others for protection and for our help to survive. This is one such story. Zephyra is an Arab yearling rescued by Heather and Eugene Somerset in November 2011 from a family who couldn't afford to keep her and her brothers and sisters fed due to economic difficulties. Unable to refuse the darling little filly, Zephyra was transferred to a loving and caring home with new owners who adore her. Heather and Eugene were out of town Friday night for a doctor's appointment in Asheville, North Carolina. They're two hours from home at 10.30 p.m. when they receive a call from Tina, the friend keeping an eye on Zephyra. Tina had come by to check on Zephyra and bring her food and water. Tina arrived at the pasture only to find the filly bloody, beaten, and exhausted. Lying near her on the ground, the remains of a torn dog collar and broken steel links from a chain. The chain we presume the dog broke in order to get loose. No sign of the dog was evident, but the presence of a dog collar and chain make it pretty clear this wasn't a wild animal attack. Horses are prey animals with only two responses to danger, fight or flight. In the case of a filly, like Zephyra, the mother will usually defend her, but being a rescue animal, no mother is around when danger came for her. At barely 12 months old, she possesses neither the strength nor the skills to fend off such an attack, and any pasture leaves only so much space to run. Fearful of what's to come, and in the middle of the night, Heather and Eugene set their sights on home, desperately worried for their young filly and knowing the money isn't there for any kind of major surgery. Lacking any means to financially handle the crisis ahead of them, they turn to prayer. Six hours later, their prayers were answered. Heather's friend Tina, owner of Ellenboro Pet and Livestock, posted pictures on their company's Facebook wall of the injured filly, along with a request to keep an eye out for a possible dog running loose in the area. Within hours, Cindy Hunter from Albemarle, North Carolina, another two hours away, saw the post, called Tina, and offered to help. Cindy has assisted Brotherford County previously with other animal rescues and has worked with Dr. Amy Jordan in a similar rescue last year for a little foal horse named Frankie. Trusting they would find a way to get the funds somehow, they started the process to bring the injured little Zephyra to Bear Creek Mobile Veterinary Clinic where Dr. Amy Jordan would perform the surgeries to put little Zephyra back together. Cindy called me and told me briefly over the phone what was happening and asked if I could set up another blog post similar to the Frankie the Fold campaign. Plan set in motion, Dr. Amy went to the clinic to get ready, and I took to the web. Lacking proper time to set up anything official, we quickly drafted a blog post about Zephyr's plight, asking breeders to share the link and donate if they could, and promised to be back in touch with more updates as they were available. Little Zephyr arrived at the clinic today at 3 p.m. this afternoon. The following video is her story. So we just found about Zephyr. She's on her way here. I'm going to interview the doc now. Hey, Dr. Amy, how you doing? Good, how are you? Uh, so I hear you've got a horse headed in. Can you tell us the details? Only details that I know right now are that we have a horse coming from out of the area. The horse got attacked by a dog sometime last night. Um, the owner doesn't have any money to pay for vet care. I do not know what I'm going to find once the filly gets here. I've seen pictures from last night, uh, but the wounds, they're getting older now, and I don't know what I'm going to get. With an animal that has facial lacerations like this, you comment that you don't know if you can help now. Why not? The golden rule is that any and all lacerations need to be repaired within six to eight hours. Otherwise, they don't repair well. Uh, they dehiss, they fall apart. They're too infected to suture back together. 
In other words, um, we're past the golden rule. I do not know what is going to be repairable. What are you working on now, Doc? Just getting the paperwork ready for when she gets here. My name is Heather Somerset, and I am the owner of an Arab filly named Zephra. She's about one year old. I was in Asheville this weekend, and I get a call yesterday about 10.30 at night from a friend who's keeping watch over my animals, and apparently uh, my filly has suffered a dog attack. A severe dog attack, and um, at first we didn't think she was going to live. I was crying all the way home from Asheville thinking I wasn't going to see her again. Hey, girl. She's a rescue filly. I got her in November from a woman who, uh, well, the woman was starving the horses, not intentionally. She just wasn't well, and the horses were starving. and. Uh, so Zephyr was a rescue animal that I took in. Uh, I'm Dr. Amy Jordan, owner and practitioner at Bear Creek Mobile Vet Services. Zephyr arrived at our clinic at around 3.30 on Sunday afternoon after being injured the night before. We estimate her injuries to be approximately 15 hours old at this time. This is well beyond the ideal time for repairing these kinds of injuries. As you can see, due to the location of her wounds, we can't use a halter. Conventional handling techniques are not advisable. Fortunately, the filly is very quiet-natured and easy to handle. We were able to unload her from the trailer without difficulty, simply using a rope and our hands. We brought her into the wash pit where she was sedated, and we began to clean and take stock of her wounds. Was that sick? Was there a flap covering that big wound on the left yeah, side? Yeah, he, he cut it off <laughs> last night. Was that bad? Well, yeah, basically her job a little harder to pull together. Was she hatting? Yeah. Good girl. Yeah, I kind of wish she hadn't, but... I'm just waiting for her to get a little bit sleepy. Yeah. She's getting there. Yeah. I can feel her head dropping. What's that? It's mucus. It's discharge from where the eye was draining and I'm going to check that eye out itself too make sure she didn't poke that go anywhere. She's moving like That's she's going to fall. She's not. She won't. Don't she's try got to, her front legs yeah, just, crossed. Just, she'll get herself there undone. Don't try to hold her up. Yeah, yeah. She will hurt you. She will you. She'll hold herself up. I didn't give her enough to make her lay down just so that she doesn't care that I'm scrubbing. This is my first opportunity to visualize the extent of Zephyr's injuries in their current state. I'm going to begin here on the right side of the face, carefully, gently inspecting and cleaning each laceration. These wounds have gotten older and many of them have sealed themselves down. This is a very time consuming process. You tell me what you're doing, Doc. Just cleaning. What well, we've got here on the right side of the muzzle are two to three medium-sized gashes. Then on the tip of the muzzle and the nose, one deep gouge made by the upper teeth of the dog. And then on the left side of the face, we have this massive lesion where there once was a big piece of skin covering it, now it's gone. There are also two very deep wounds or lacerations to the left side of the face on the muzzle. These do need to be repaired and can be sutured. The external wounds are only part of the problem. There are puncture wounds from the teeth of the dog underneath of the lip where my fingers are. That is causing a vast majority of the swelling. There are several wounds inside the mouth that you can't see. Uh, the external wounds are bad, but the internal wounds are bad too. We have to keep those clean so they'll heal. Fortunately, the mouth heals incredibly well. The sterile water first. At this stage, we've got the wounds cleaned, and now we're going to start debriding. The stuff you see in Hannah's hand, that's lidocaine.
And we're going to locally anesthetize these wounds so she doesn't feel us doing it. Okay. There are there are a few here that I think I can debride really well. There's definitely a lot of infection, especially around this muzzle. Um, so she'll need to be on antibiotics and she'll need to be hospitalized. She'll need to stay. Um, before I get too much further, I'm going to get you to sign the release saying that I have permission to do this. Okay. You're going to let me do this. Right. I'm not keeping this horse here or doing anything that you're not giving me permission to do. It, okay. You're the owner. You say. Don't you say down. what goes. Don't Let's just, yeah, I need to hold her head here a little bit. So. Okay. Okay. All right, I'll do that. Okay. All right, guys, yeah, just let her sit here for a second. Hey, and just bring that thing. Good. Uh -huh. Good. Okay, now what I'm doing is just lidocaining okay, you some areas me. so that she doesn't feel. So those areas are, are not sensitive anymore. And I'm going to debride those areas and try to suture those areas. We're going to end up kind of having to do this a little bit at the time. Okay, I think I'm going to work on those two first. And I think I might can get something with this nose sutured. It's hard to light a game when it just keeps coming yeah. out. <laughs> okay, sweetheart. It's okay. Good girl. And over on Amy's couch. Go ahead, Amy. Go ahead. Okay. All right. We'll get you seen. I have to get all the dead tissue off. Yeah, I have to get all this infected tissue away. Otherwise, the sutures won't stay. The wound won't stay closed. Yes. I'm going to go from this end first. It's okay, sweetheart. How long will the lidocaine last? Not long. That's why I only did two or three sections at a time. By the time I, if I did all, it's okay. If I did all of them, it'd wear off. The hair's gone. I'm finishing up suturing okay. one of these wounds on the left side of the muzzle. We've debrided it already, and, and now we're suturing it. Uh, then we're going to move on to the next one. There's a rather large laceration at the bottom of this top lip, and here I am debriding it. Now, there is a lot of blood in this scene. I need that. I need to get down to that good, healthy tissue. Uh, blood is good. Uh, once I get all that dead tissue away and get down to the good, healthy tissue, then I can start suturing it. Um, now we're suturing this wound together uh, so that her lip will come together and heal properly and not have this big open gap on the left side of her lip. Uh, it's not only you know, cosmetic, but functional. Uh, I know it's a mess, but it's it's a work in progress. It'll look good here in a little bit. Okay. As you can see, we're about done here. Uh, we're getting ready to finish tying off the last of the sutures on this lip. It, it already looks a lot better. Just getting it closed. We're going to start debriding this large, massive lesion on the tip of the nose. There appears to be a big chunk of skin missing. Um, so what we're going to have to do is debride as much of the top part of this wound as we can and then sew as much of it together as possible. We're going to have to leave some open.
Philly's been given a little bit more sedation, and so she's laying down for us. I'm not gonna be able to do um, So we're gonna finish well. repairing this nose I mean, while she's laying down. She's resting comfortably. Uh, now we're gonna work on the eyelid once we got those lip lacerations fixed. Is that tear duct or anything, is it? The eye itself is okay. There's no damage to the cornea. There's just a laceration to the upper eyelid. It should be a simple repair. The eyelid will be functional and the eye will retain all of its vision. Stain the eye again. Is she okay? Yeah, she's doing great. She's just in La La Land. She's sleeping. Wonderful. <laughs> she's just relaxing. We're going to take good care to make sure this eyelid uh, is as perfect as we can make it uh, using some small sutures and close together uh, we can make this eyelid have minimal to no scarring. At this point we've done about all the suturing we're going to be able to do. Uh, the wounds are closed and we're going to let her go ahead and take her time to stand up. Uh, we're going to let her do this on her own. Just give her a little bit of time and a little bit of support. Uh, she's been pretty good, calm, and quiet so far. No, little girl. Now that she's on her feet, uh, she's a little shaky from the sedation. We're going to go ahead and give her just a little bit of fluids to kind of help flush some of these drugs out of her system. Okay. Uh, my technician, Samantha, here is inserting an IV catheter so that we have access for IV fluids, antibiotics, okay. future pain meds. Um, if we need to do anything, then we have it there. And now we're gonna hang up just a little bit of fluids. It's not a lot. She's not real dehydrated. Again, it's just kind of to top her off, flush some of these meds out of her system, help her not be quite so shaky. She'll recover from the sedation a lot faster. Uh, she's been a really good patient. Again, we have no way of putting a halter on this filly. This is strictly us with our hands and a little bit of a rope directing her in a direction and she's willingly going along with it. Uh, she's been a very nice patient so far. Um, one of the best. These fluids won't take very long to run. Uh, then we'll take her over to her stall, see if she wants to eat something, get her settled in. That smells good. That smells yummy. Okay, this, I just emptied it. On. You're going to have to get it out of that bucket in there. Going all the way down there. <laughs> Sweetie, you're going to have to get it out of there. How you doing? You doing good? You want to smile? Let everybody know you're doing okay? It's been pretty much right at 24 hours. She is, um, she's doing really well. She's eating, she's drinking, she's pooping, she's peeing, she's doing all those things that little fillies are supposed to do, including getting into trouble. She says, I like to knock my bucket off. <laughs> she gets antibiotics and anti-inflammatories every day. Are you giving me kisses? Come back. Jennifer just wanted to make sure you got her good side. Because this is her good side. So we do good work. Yes, we do. She will be beautiful. She will be beautiful. Good girl. Tell us what you're doing here. I'm just uh, <laughs> putting some cream on her face. If I can get her to stop moving for just a second. There we go. Tell us what it's for. It's an antibiotic cream. It just helps to keep it clean. This is the one that had the, the big flap that's missing. So it's open. There was nothing. We couldn't suture it closed. So we have to keep it clean and keep antibiotic cream on it. Little Zephra will still have a long road to recovery. Special care by the doctors throughout each day while she remains at Bear Creek, followed by careful treatment from Heather and Eugene, will be required for months after she returns home. But with time and a loving home, 
Zephra will return to her full health. I know I speak for all of us here at Bear Creek, for Heather and Eugene Somerset, and for Zephra when I say from the bottom of our hearts, thank you.